part 21 of I Saw This TikTok, where a guy was analyzing which letter of the alphabet would make for the best home floor plan. Today, we are going to be doing the letter U. And the comments were pretty much unanimous in my last video. You guys want U for underwater. So let's do it. We are back on our alphabet lot. Now, as per usual, I will link the entire alphabet playlist down below so you can binge all of the episodes thus far. But I'm kind of sad. After we finish the letter U, we only have one row of letters left and then we're completely done with the alphabet series. And hopefully by then we'll have a definitive answer on which letter of the alphabet has the best floor plan. But for today's letter, you can see that I shifted things around a little bit because I'm gonna need all of this space for the letter U. All of you gave really great suggestions on what features we wanna include in our underwater build. So we're gonna have pools surrounding the letter U. We're also gonna use the glass floor decoration from the Island Living Pack. And lastly, we wanna use the terrain lake tool to possibly fill up some rooms with water. Now I did quite a bit of research beforehand to figure out how to set up this build so we can incorporate all of those features. So watch carefully. Firstly, we're just gonna grab our room tool and create a small one by one room right here. Next, we're gonna grab this flat square and place it on top of this room. Now we're gonna grab the room and lower it into the ground only until the top platform is basically in line with the ground. Now we're gonna grab our square tool again and place it at the level of the room that's underground. From here, we can now extend this room and create our base. It needs to be wide enough so we can have enough pool on either side and also long enough to actually fit the letter U inside. Okay, here's our base. Now I'm gonna grab our U shell and place it inside. Now for the fun part, adding our swimming pool. Now the important thing is we don't wanna add the pool to this layer. We wanna actually attach it to this top layer that's floating. So I'm just gonna start it on the corner here and then drag it out to fill the space. For the corners here, just use the custom pool tool to create little triangles. And there you go, here is our U-shell underwater. Now you might be wondering why I went through all that hassle and didn't just use the basement tool. Well, the fun thing about this is when you go into the U, you can see that we still were able to maintain that rounded U-shape, whereas the basement tool is not actually compatible with rounded walls. So this is just the best way to maintain the most accurate shape of the U. It also just looks a lot better. I really don't like building in basement mode. The camera like goes all wonky and stuff. So this is a lot easier. Okay, first things first, I think we need to figure out an entry point into the letter U because it is just floating in the middle of the water. So I was thinking that maybe we could just add a staircase to like bridge the gap here so you can safely make it to the water. You definitely don't want to fall down that crack. I don't know who's saving you if you fall down that crack. I'm wondering actually if we can fill that empty space with some water around the edges. Is that? Oh my gosh. Yes, let's go. Okay, I've eliminated the risk of falling down the crack, but you can technically still like drown there. So just don't don't come near here if you if you can't swim. Okay, it's an underwater build. What do you expect? Next, let's just put these spa day slabs. Maybe they can act as like little stepping stones or something. Maybe decorating it with some of these lotus lanterns from the City Living Expansion Pack to make it look just a little bit more welcoming. I mean, it's definitely very sketchy to get across this path. Don't, don't bring your toddlers here, okay? You guys should know better. Or maybe you want to bring your toddlers. I think I'm gonna cover the edges a bit with some greenery just so it doesn't look so obvious that there's a big gap. I guess we're just going all out with this build again. I mean, why not? Okay, this build looks so silly in the middle of this lot in Brindleton Bay. Should I move it? Okay, I moved it and I can't even begin to explain how much better it looks. It just blends in with the surrounding environment literally perfectly. So I hope it's okay that this build is getting a little bit of special treatment. Okay, let's get to floor planning and furnishing, shall we? So there aren't a ton of options for the letter U, not to mention this huge area of rounded wall, which will be kind of difficult. But I definitely know that I want to give this place a nice big bathroom and possibly just have the one and only bedroom connected to that bathroom. I think it would be nice to have a pretty decently sized kitchen in the corner here and then also a dedicated dining room which does leave this large rounded section down here to be our living room. We definitely have enough space to fit all of our required rooms. I guess the wild card here will be how we use this middle section of the U and also how we use the upper section of the U. Usually I wouldn't consider the upper section of the letter, but because we've obviously done the landscaping and everything, we can't just leave it looking like concrete. We have to be consistent here. 
but this floor plan is definitely the best option for the letter U, so let's get started. Should we start with the bathroom first? I feel like the bathroom would be fun. And the first thing I want to do is basically line the entire bathroom with these big open windows so you can see into the water that surrounds you. It's not like there's any privacy issue here either because like, what are you trying to hide? It's just fish looking at you. For flooring and wall tile, I think I'll go in with like a spa day vibe and maybe really lean into the underwater theme and go with the blue swatch. For shower, I definitely want to create my own custom walk-in shower, so I'm going to grab this snowy escape one. Then I'm going to grab this gray and blue frosted room divider from the Moschino pack and size it down twice and create my own custom glass wall. This is definitely one of my favorite tricks of all time. I just think it makes the bathroom look so luxurious. It's also perfect for this particular build because the see-through glass means that you're not missing out on any of the views. I'm just gonna put this concrete slab from the Desert Lux kit here, just as a spot to put all of your shower products. Okay, that's literally perfect. Now for this side of the bathroom, I think it would be really nice if we could include a soaker tub. I think we're gonna have enough space. Maybe grabbing this blue one from the spa day pack, it matches the floor and walls. For bath mat, I guess we have to go with this fluffy one from Snowy Escape, right? I mean, there's there's literally no other option, right? Okay, onto this side, we have just enough room for a vanity and toilet. Let's do the spot eye toilet with the matching blue swatch, and then maybe there's a matching sink vanity as well. Wait a second, there's actually no matching spa day sink. Like there's this one here, but it doesn't have the matching blue swatch that we've been using throughout this whole bathroom. Like why? Why did they do that to us? Why did they tease us with the blue swatch and then not give us the matching blue sink? Tell me why. I guess the beige swatch will have to do. I mean, we, we literally have no other choice. That's all they gave us. And then why don't we finish off with this glowy spa day mirror? For this build, I was thinking we can go all out with the blue underwater theme and choose the glowy blue swatch. It's maybe a little bit tacky, I'm not gonna lie, but you know, if there's a time to use a blue glowy mirror in a bathroom, it's this one where it's literally underwater. So I think it's okay. Let's get another towel rack in here. I can imagine this is one of those fancy towel racks that like warms your towels or something. And lastly, I'm just gonna go in with some of these wall decals from the bathroom clutter kit. You might be thinking like, no, Ashley, stop. It makes it look tacky. It was looking so nice and luxurious before. And to that, I say, stop it, get a grip. This is an underwater build. When else are we gonna use these silly decals? We're just gonna have a nice sly turtle peeking out from behind the towels, okay? It's subtle. And there you have it. Here is our underwater bathroom all done. I think that it looks really great. I've never done an all blue bathroom before and I don't wanna hear it about the decals, okay? This is an underwater build. It fit the theme. Onto the bedroom and similar to the bathroom, I want to line all of the walls with these windows. Okay, for the bedroom, I thought it would be kind of cool if maybe two like mermaid sisters lived here. In most of my alphabet builds, I tend to just put like one double bed for like a couple or something. But for this one, I thought it would be fun to experiment with a different bedroom layout. I want to go in with this wall decoration called Scroll of the Mermaid Tail and give one to each of them on top of their bed. Almost as if they haven't told anyone that they're mermaids, but they kind of have little Easter eggs here and there. Now for flooring, this might be a little out there, but I want it to look like the sea floor since you're literally surrounded by water so i'm gonna put sand down now for walls we have to go with something blue to resemble the ocean maybe just this blue plaster from the eco lifestyle pack is pretty subtle we don't actually have a ton of room in here so i'm just gonna go in with your typical bedroom items like a dresser and a mirror this tall dresser from high school years looks so mermaidy i'm actually shocked it even has like the little sea plants coming up from the bottom in fact, we can actually get some more of these wall decals to match. For the mirror, I'm considering two options. Either this one from the basement treasures kit. I'm thinking like Ariel vibes where she finds these vintage artifacts that fall to the sea floor. Or another good option would be the one from the pastel pop kit, this one right here. It kind of resembles like a water puddle or something. So it's perfect for an ocean vibe. I can't really decide. I mean, now that we kind of know the theme we're going for, it wouldn't be a bad idea to replace the bathroom mirror with this one, just because this one makes it feel a little bit more youthful. That way we can still use this mirror in the main bedroom. 
Oh, should I use one of these swatches that's cracked? I'm thinking if they found this mirror at the bottom of the ocean, it's not unlikely that it would have cracked along the way. I kind of like that. On this side, we have room for one of these mermaids love treasure chests. I imagine this is where they store their valuables or any of their other human treasures that they've found. I do want to put a rug, but it wouldn't make sense to put like an actual rug. So I was thinking of using one of these swatches from City Living, like these flower petals. It actually might be more like paint, but honestly, it kind of looks like flower petals to me. And I think that looks really mermaidy. Oh my gosh, there's also this shell chair, which would be perfect. We definitely have to use this somewhere. If not in this room, somewhere else around the house. I found this room divider from the city living pack and it comes in this beautiful pink and purple swatch. This is so cute, by the way. I can't believe I've never seen this before. Like I've never laid eyes on this before. This specific shade of pink and this specific shade of purple are like my two favorite colors in the world. And it happens to match the two beds here. So I'm thinking maybe we can use this as a room divider like so, and then create kind of like a dedicated closet space. I also found this shell wall decoration from the Get Famous pack. I think that'd be really cute to put on top of the bed here. Maybe I'll save the tapestry for somewhere outside. It doesn't really fit the exact color palette we're going for right now. Okay, I just went in with a few more of these decals from the bathroom clutter kit just on the windows here. And I think it actually looks really cute and youthful. I was thinking maybe I should bring this sand from the bedroom into the bathroom here just to make it feel a little bit more cohesive. Like if we're gonna do it, we might as well just go all out, right? In fact, why not just bring even more of these decals into the bathroom, right? We just said we were gonna go all out. I don't know why, but in my head, I can just hear people being like, you're ruining it, stop with the decals. <laughs> I don't know why, I just like them so much. I think they're fun in this build. Last but not least, we need to go in with some lighting for the bedroom and I want to go with something a little bit magical or mystical. Maybe even these ones? Yeah, these ones have like a cool glow to them, don't they? I think that might be our best bet. They look pretty magical. And with that being said, here is our underwater mermaid seafloor bedroom all done. I think that it looks super fun, super youthful. And I'm kind of happy that we're going for a semi occult home instead of just like your typical luxury underwater home. I don't know, it's just fun to change it up once in a while. So let's move on to our next room. Let's move on to the living room now. I've come up with this really wild idea in my head. I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to execute execute it build wise here or not, but let's give it a try. So I was thinking of turning this entire living room area into like an open air beach because mermaids don't need to chill on a couch per se. They want to chill on the sand and like on a nice lounge chair and dip their feet in the water. So in order to make this like an open air beach, I'm going to put the sand like so, and then I'm going to go up here and delete the ceiling. So that completely exposes this area right here. And then I wanted this to kind of be like a rocky area that eventually turns into water. And then maybe take it a step further and have the water on this side kind of flowing over the edge like a waterfall. Okay, okay, I have ideas. I have no idea if I'm gonna be able to do it or not. Let's, let's just give it a try, okay? So first of all, I think we need to open up this area a little bit with a spandrel like so. Let's grab the matching columns from Island Living as well. Now I wonder what would happen if I just grabbed like the pool tool and just like placed it in here like that. Oh my gosh, okay. So that would fill the entire space up with water, which isn't exactly what we want. Maybe I'm better off just putting an actual pool in here so they can just swim in it. Now, what are the fountain options? I know we have one from Spa Day that will likely be perfect for the space. This one right here. I mean, it doesn't really get much more perfect than that, does it? Maybe we can even grab some greenery over here to kind of blur the edge. Oh my gosh, I'm excited. That looks pretty good. Now I'm just gonna go in with maybe some rocks on the wall here. That's looking like a cute little oasis. Now I just wanna go in with some rocks and maybe some plants here on the beach. I'm just in the Island Living debug section and grabbing a few of these rocks. 
I'm also finding these cool like coral reef items that I'm gonna spread around the bottom of the pool so you can see it from the inside of the builds. Okay, I kind of went overboard and really decorated the bottom of the pool with a ton of debug stuff. I'm actually obsessed. It looks so pretty now. One thing that I did find which is so cute for our beach is I found these little starfish. Honestly, the debug section in Island Living is so much fun. It looks so cool and colorful from the top. I'm super happy with it. I think it would be fun if we put like the toddler string lights here on our beach. That looks really cute. I also used the pink swatch. I usually just use like the yellow lights, but this time I wanted to use the pink. I felt like it was more mermaidy. This is all escalating very quickly, by the way. I honestly thought I was gonna come in here and just make like a typical little luxury getaway, but it's turning into like a full on under the sea moment. Now for the living room, this is kind of like the beach area. So I just wanna put out maybe some lounge chairs and maybe some activities, I'm not really sure. It's definitely not your conventional living room. This is for someone who loves to be on the beach and loves to be in the water, AKA some mermaids. That looks good. Now we still do have the problem of how are they gonna get down from like the top here. I think for the sake of space, we should just use a ladder. And I think this lattice one from the high school years pack would be perfect. We can disguise it a little bit better and makes this mermaid house seem a little bit more low key and secretive. Day two. Hi, by the way, it's the next day. I had to stop filming last time because I was hungry, but we're back to finish this build. So I know I said I didn't want to include a formal living area, but that would also mean that I wouldn't get to include this aquarium coffee table. So I feel like I have to find a way to incorporate this somehow. Maybe just put a few casual chairs around it. It will mainly be for the aesthetic rather than the function. I just put a few of these beachy looking chairs from high school years around the coffee table and then I'm gonna do like fishception and put a fishbowl on top of the fishbowl coffee table. I also need to figure out a solution for these edges. Obviously it looks round from the inside, but from the outside we do have these sharp corners. I'm thinking we might have to cover up these edges either with some rocks or some items from debug just to smooth it out a little bit and really highlight that U shape. I'm just testing out placing rocks. It seems like this might be a viable solution. Okay, that definitely smoothed out the edges. I don't know if it's unrealistic or not to have the rocks just like floating in the middle of the water or not, but at least it looks a little bit more natural, so I think I'm okay with it. Now, for the top section here, I was thinking of just putting some more plants and trees and grass and stuff. Not anything too intense, just like a continuation of whatever we had in the surrounding environment already. Yay, okay, that looked really pretty. I think it actually blends in with everything really nicely. It doesn't look too obvious. So now I think it's time to go inside and finish off the interior. We have our dining room, then our kitchen. Now I did already use the shell chair in the bedroom, but I think I still want it to have its own moment in the dining room. This room is actually a lot smaller than I thought, so I think I might actually have to go for a round four-seater dining table. We could go for the gold swatch of the chairs so it kind of matches the outer rim of the table, or we could go full pastel vibes and grab the pink swatch. I'm not sure exactly which one I'm leaning towards. I think it might be nicer to go with the gold one and then maybe do something fun on the walls instead. This might be a little out there, but I was thinking of going in with a colorful tile on the wall. Either this bright blue one from high school years, it just makes it look very like majestic and grand. But I also found this bright pink stone as well, which looks so cool. I kind of feel like this pink one looks a little bit more like under the sea vibes with the stones being slightly more disheveled. So I am inclined to go with this one. Also, this is super random, but I found this pool rescue equipment and I thought it would be kind of funny if we put it by the pool here. I mean, it's kind of ironic because they're mermaids, so they obviously know how to swim. They're trying to appear as normal as possible if they would ever have guests over. And then on this blank wall, I was thinking of putting this intricate wall decoration from the Eco Lifestyle pack. For some reason, it kind of reminds me of like mermaid scales. Now let's add a fun overhead light and I wanted to go for something a little bit majestic. And I was thinking this one from the Get Famous pack. 
And instead of a floral centerpiece, let's go in with another little fishbowl. Again with the no rug policy, so I just went in with that same city living floor decoration that we used in the bedroom. This time I used the white swatch. The more I look at it, the more I'm torn if it's supposed to be flower petals or paint splatters. But in this case, I'm gonna pretend like they're seashells. So use your imagination, everybody. I love the texture of this pink stone so much that I think I'm actually going to use it in the bedroom as well. There is a matching blue swatch that is pretty similar to the color we had already chosen and I think that this just fits the like underwater underground theme a little bit better and makes it look just slightly more realistic than plaster walls. And with that being said, here is our underwater mermaid dining room all done. I absolutely love how it turned out. Everything from the color palette to the seashell chairs to the big open windows. I just think this room is perfect for two mermaid sisters or best friends. By the way, I found these cute items in Debug. I thought they would be fun just to decorate the top section up here. Just this clothing drying rack and also this fish stand. It's kitchen time. So for the kitchen, I think the most important thing is we have to find something that fits the color palette. Because design wise, none of these kitchen cabinets are really giving underwater necessarily. I guess the country kitchen kit counters are slightly more disheveled, which could make a little bit more sense, I guess. It wouldn't hurt to go with an all blue theme since we are underwater. There are quite a lot of blue appliances too. I'm really drawn to this blue Realm of Magic stove. Something about it just looks so pretty. And I also love how the brass hardware matches the brass hardware from the Country Kitchen Kit. Oh, I guess we can use the matching fridge from Realm of Magic as well. I didn't realize there was a matching fridge, but thank goodness. That actually doesn't look half bad. I never would have thought to pair Realm of Magic and Country Kitchen Kit together, but I guess in an underwater mermaid build, this kind of works. Here's the base of our kitchen all done. Now I'm just gonna go in and clutter up the countertops. Here's the kitchen all cluttered up. Now I opted for some open shelving and I decided to use the new ones from the Modern Lux kit. They're really pretty. I love the hardware on them. They match my kitchen perfectly. And I think the glass is really unique as well. Most of the clutter items here are just from the base game. These jars are from the debug section. This utensil holder is actually from the new horse ranch pack, which I love. And then this fruit bowl is from Island Living. I had a little bit of extra space on this side the wall so I decided to use the matching modern Lux bookshelf again the hardware just ties into the rest of the kitchen really nicely I also didn't really allocate much space in the house for like their personal items so yeah maybe the kitchen isn't the best place for this but you can also imagine that maybe these are a bunch of their cookbooks that they've collected from around the world or something I also thought it was super cute to include this bulletin board with a bunch of postcards from around the world I imagine these mermaid sisters have swam across the world and visited tons of cool places. We are still lacking in the rug department, but for some reason it's just not making sense in my brain to put down like a real rug. Okay, this journey to Batu like cracked tile floor could work. It is possible that they could have salvaged this from the bottom of the ocean or something. I think it gives it kind of like a homey touch. And here is our underwater mermaid kitchen all done. I think that it's the perfect balance of majestic and homey and the blue color scheme was perfect in this room. Okay, I'm just doing some finishing touches and I'm sorting by the island living pack just to see if there's any items that I didn't use. And I'm noticing there are some items that I did miss. For example, this wall divider comes in this pretty pink swatch. And I think this might be a better option for our bedroom instead of the city living one. Don't get me wrong, I am happy with the city living one, but this one just gives a little bit more of an island vibe. Not to mention there's this glass floor decoration that I promised I would use at the beginning of the video. Okay, I put the glass flooring on top of the dining room here, just in the center. I don't think that's too intrusive. I also found another treasure chest that I definitely want to include. And then instead of totally deleting this one, because it does have some like ocean plants and grime on it, I was gonna put it in their pool at the bottom. It's kind of like a secret treasure chest that only the mermaids can get to when they swim to the bottom. But you guys, that's gonna be it for our underwater mermaid build. Let's just turn it to evening time and to nighttime just to see what the lighting looks like. Oh my gosh, yes. The vibes are great. This bedroom is so glowy and majestic. I love it. And when you look at it from the top angle, you kind of see that there's lights coming from the water, but you're not really sure what. 
The U for underwater build turned out way better than I could have ever imagined. I cannot believe how in-depth we went with it and how quickly things escalated. I'm really proud of myself. We started with a relatively normal looking spa day bathroom and this very much could have just turned into like a luxury resort build. But then we got to the bedroom and that's when I decided to make it mermaid themed for sisters or maybe some best friends. And this is also where we discovered what our color scheme was gonna be. And then by the time we got to the living room my ideas were just flowing wild and I decided to make this a full-on beach with a waterfall. <laughs> And it kind of came together super quickly after that. I feel like once you commit to a theme like 200%, nothing is off the table and things get kind of easier and more fun that way. But I need to give the Island Living Debug menu a huge shout out for bringing all of this to life. And of course, to my fellow YouTuber, Kate Emerald. I really hope you guys liked this one. It took me a little bit longer than usual, but it was so much fun. And I think we used the shape of the letter U in a really unique way. So don't forget to let me know what you think of the floor plan. Please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, it really helps me out and don't forget to comment down below what ideas you have for the letter V in our next episode. Also comment down below what your favorite room in this house was, usually I have like a personal favorite that I'm leaning towards, but in this case I honestly can't decide, I kind of love all of them, is that weird to say? Besides that, I love you guys so much and I can't wait to see you guys next week, I hope you guys have a super 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 above average day. Love you!